So we understood that the entire Himalayan region can be broken down into three distinct regions. First is the Himalayan ranges, second is the Trans Himalayas and the third one is the Eastern Hills or Purvanchal. And then we also discussed about the division of Himalayan ranges. So the Himalayan ranges are divided into three parallel ranges stretching from the Indo-Gangetic plain in the south to the Tibetan plateau in the north. So you have the Shivaliks or the outer Himalayas, the middle Himalayas or the lesser Himalayas and the great Himalayas or the Himatri. So in between the Tibetan plateau in the north to the Indo-Gangetic plain in the south, we have three parallel ranges of Himalayas. So starting from the south, we have the Shivaliks or the outer Himalayas and the middle one is the middle or lesser Himalayas and the northernmost one is the great Himalayas or the Himatri. So this is what we have discussed in the previous video. Now in this video, we are going to discuss about the Shivalik range. Okay. So the Shivalik range is the outermost range of Himalayas and also it is the southernmost range. So just above the Indo-Gangetic plain, you have a chain of low hills, which are nothing but Shivaliks. So Shivaliks are also called the outer Himalayas or the outer foot hills. So these are the other names given to Shivaliks. Clear, right? So this is how they look like. So Shivaliks are nothing but a chain of almost unbroken, continuous low hills above the Indo-Gangetic plain. Clear? So, let me just proceed. This chain of hills runs parallel to lesser Himalayas for a distance of about 2,400 kilometers from the Potwar plateau in the northeastern Pakistan to the Brahmaputra valley. So, just imagine that you find Potwar plateau here in northeastern Pakistan. So, just find Potwar plateau on map. It will be very useful to you. So, from Potwar plateau in the northeastern Pakistan, to the Brahmaputra valley. Okay. The Shivaliks, they stretch as a chain of low hills which are almost unbroken, which are continuous. So they stretch for around 2,400 kilometers from Potwar Plateau in Pakistan to Brahmaputra valley. Clear, right? And they run more or less parallel to the middle Himalayas. Okay. Now, let us discuss about the width of the Shivaliks. The width of the Shivaliks varies from 50 kilometers in Himachal Pradesh to less than 15 kilometers in Arunachal Pradesh. So the width of Shivaliks is the highest in the state of Himachal Pradesh. And by the time we come to Arunachal Pradesh, the width of the Shivaliks reduces to less than 15 kilometers. Clear, right? Now, just look at this last point. Shivaliks is an almost unbroken chain of low hills except for a gap of 80 to 90 kilometers which is occupied by the valley of Tista river. So Shivaliks is almost unbroken. It is a chain of continuous low hills but there is a gap and that gap was created by Tista river. So there is a gap of 80 to 90 kilometers and this gap is occupied by the valley of Tista river. So where do we find Tista river in India? In India, Tista river flows through the states of Sikkim and West Bengal. Clear, right? So I hope you got a clear picture about Shivaliks. Let us also discuss about the altitude of the Shivaliks. So the altitude of Shivaliks hills ranges from 600 to 1500 meter. So as I told you, these are hills. These are not mountains. There is a difference between hill and mountain, right? So when you say hill, the elevation is less. But when you say mountain, like the Himalayan mountains, the Himadri, so their elevation, you know, it goes beyond 6,000 meter. Clear? So Shivaliks are hills, they are not mountains. So the altitude of Shivaliks ranges between 600 meter to 1,500 meter. And the eastern section of the Shivaliks is covered by thick forest, but the forest cover becomes less in the west. Now these points you have to keep in mind 
they might be asked in the exam okay so please don't take anything lightly and these are some of the most important points about shivaliks so let me just proceed now again this is a very very important concept you got many previous questions from this the shivaliks are known by different names in different areas they are called jammu hills in jammu abur and mishmi hills in arunachal pradesh this is an image of mishmi hills in arunachal pradesh very beautiful right occupied by thick forests and they are called the dhang range and dundwa range in uttarakhand so please remember these names very very important from exam perspective now let us discuss about the geology of the shivaliks so shivaliks were formed last of all ranges now this point is very 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 important please keep this in mind so shivaliks were formed last of all the ranges okay so first the great himalayas or himadri formed first the great himalayas or himadri formed next formed the middle himalayas and then last the shivaliks or the outer himalayas clear so this point is very important guys kindly keep this in mind now shivaliks contain thick deposits of sand and gravel which have been deposited by the rivers flowing from the higher ranges of himalayas so as we know shivaliks formed last and by the time shivaliks formed already great himalayas and middle himalayas have formed and rivers started flowing from these mountains okay now eventually shivaliks formed so the shivaliks were deposited by thick layers of sand and gravel which the himalayan rivers were carrying from high altitudes clear right so let us just go through this point one more time the shivaliks contain thick deposits of sand and gravel which have been deposited by the rivers flowing from the higher ranges of himalayas so compared to shivaliks middle himalayas and greater himalayas are higher ranges okay so shivaliks formed last first great himalayas formed the next middle himalayas and eventually shivaliks formed at the end so by the time shivaliks formed the himalayan rivers were already flowing from the great himalayas and middle himalayas so when the rivers flow they carry all the sediments so sediments are nothing but particles of sand and gravel so they were deposited on the shivaliks clear now what do you mean by sand and gravel so just look at this image for the sake of clarity so the particles of the soil they vary in size the smallest particle is clay and next you have silt and then you have sand and gravel so of all the soil particles it is the gravel which is the largest the next largest is sand the next silt and the smallest particle of the soil is clay clear so that is the difference between sand and gravel so i hope you understood this so as the shivaliks formed after the formation of the himalayas they obstructed the courses of rivers flowing from the higher altitudes of himalayas and temporary lakes were formed okay so shivaliks formed at the end so rivers which are coming from the higher elevations of himalayas they were blocked by this newly formed range of low hills which are nothing but shivaliks so temporary lakes were formed okay and these lakes were filled with sediments that the rivers were carrying now we know that running water which is nothing but rivers and streams they are one of the most powerful erosional forces so the running water eventually cut through the shivaliks and the lakes got drained away leaving behind deposits of sediments so i hope you understood this process so we will discuss about erosional forces the different agents of erosion in detail under geomorphology so please don't worry about that but as of now you just have to keep one small process in mind shivaliks formed at the end okay now the rivers which are flowing from the great himalayas or you can say middle himalayas they were blocked by the shivaliks so temporary lakes were formed at the shivaliks and these lakes were filled with sediments that these rivers were carrying and 
we know that running water that means streams or rivers these are one of the most powerful erosional forces in the world so the rivers eventually cut through the shivaliks they formed valleys through the shivaliks and the water got drained away leaving behind the sediments clear so after the rivers had cut through their courses through the shivalik hills the lakes were drained away leaving behind plains made up of sediments and these plains are called dunes or dunes clear now the dune valley which is 75 km long and about 15 to 20 km wide is the best example within this dune valley is the city of dehradun okay and apart from that in jammu hills we have the dunes of udampur and kotli these are large and extensive dunes so this is an image of dune valley so i hope you understood how these dunes or dunes are formed in this video we have discussed about the shivaliks and we also discussed the formation of dunes so this concept is very very important so thank you so much for watching keep learning and all the best